Ape Out is really good. It's a game by Gabe Carazzolo, Matt Bosch and Bennett Foddy. Who clearly got the other two to watch his GDC talk, put your name on your game. In Ape Out you play as a mad gorilla, I've nicknamed him Ishmael after one of my favourite books but you can call him anything you like. He's a super strong gorilla and you can just launch people into walls, usually obliterating them in the process. It's got a Doom-esque feel to the combat, get in there and cause havoc. It's violent and graphic but the minimalist and eccentric visual style prevents it from ever feeling gory. If you're too slow to get to someone or end up surrounded in open space you're going to get shot. Get shot too many times and you die, and you will die a lot. Although dying in Ape Out never feels that bad because of the cool way it zooms out from the level to show a trail marking everywhere you went before you got blasted to Ape Heaven. I wish you could see these tracks for the levels where you didn't die too. Maybe get a collection of them all at the end, print them out, turn them into a poster. I wish I could get these diagrams for me in real life. Alright, maybe not. Right trigger is the punch button to throw people into walls, left trigger grabs and holds. You learn this move to pull a giant steel door off his hinges but it works on guards too. You can pick them up to aim a throw and send one baddie flying like a missile into his friends, or if you pick them up just before firing you can start aiming their weapon back at their own side for some sweet karmic justice. There's a range of different enemies like a pretty basic gunman who'll get killed by anything, heavies that can survive being chucked into people but still splatter like a bug on a windshield when they hit a wall, and the guys who carry C4 around with them who I kept chucking into walls right in front of me and killing myself. Did it four times in a row once. Yeah, I don't need to see that graph thank you, I know I only moved about 8 feet. Ape Out is gorgeous. I love how different the game looks and even the backgrounds that could easily just be plain single colours are moving around to match the frantic tempo of the gameplay. The animation of the gorilla makes you feel really powerful. I'm also a big fan of the way that despite the camera being top down, walls extend to infinity in the plane of the camera so you can still only see enemies that are in your line of sight. It keeps you in the moment reacting to what's in front of you and enjoying the chaos that causes. It is so much fun. It's mechanically simple but by no means easy and the gameplay fits the eccentric visual style. But to limit the praise to just what this game is mechanically would completely miss a pout spirit. What really makes this game is how all of this combines with the music. The other day I saw a trailer on Reddit for an indie game that looked a bit like Flappy Bird except you control the character by lengthening and shortening a wavelength that the bird follows up and down the screen. The clip only had some generic up-tempo trailer music on it so I asked the devs if in the actual game the changing wavelength was factored into a dynamic soundtrack. They said no and I thought that they missed a trick. I mean, maybe it's just a small team and they don't have anyone with the expertise to do that, but still, missed a trick. Dynamic soundtracks elevate a game, and in the future if I ever need to pick an example to demonstrate this, I'm going with Ape Out. Dynamic soundtracks are feedback, they're a reward for the player. You do this, have this acknowledgement. There's a reason why headshots in video games usually come with a satisfying little plink, and in Ape Out it's that times a thousand. Every level in the game has its own theme, but the drum track increases in intensity the more enemies there are on the screen. You get crashing cymbals whenever an enemy is killed. The more kills you make, the louder and faster the drummer plays, but if time passes without more kills then it settles back down again. No matter how you're playing you've got a soundtrack to fit. Going on a murderous rampage have something to fit that action, but if you're being a bit sneakier trying to run past the enemies out of sight then the music gets quieter and stealthy. It never gets repetitive either because the game draws from an incredible range of literally thousands of individual drum sounds. The dynamic soundtrack makes Ape out. Take the music off the top and you've got solid mechanics and trippy art but it wouldn't give that same feeling of excitement. Ape Out is split into four albums of eight tracks each, four on side A and four on side B. That might sound like an unnecessary detail to mention but actually with how high tempo Ape Out is it was really nice to get that short moment of rest after four levels when the end of side A message pops up. There's only so long you can play a game with this level of intensity for without having a moment to cool off. But what Ape Out really needed was something to add some variety to the levels. The gameplay is fun, frantic and satisfying but it needed some twists and gimmicks to periodically change up the pacing and it really feels like it missed Ape, no it didn't at all. Just a few tracks into album 1, I'm sticking with their lingo on this, you get Lights Out. A level where you pull a generator off a wall and everything goes dark. 
Stylistically, it looks cool, but it also changes the gameplay. You can only see baddies coming from the light cones of their torches, and it's not as immediately clear where all the corridors are to run down. So sometimes you've got to mess with the enemy, draw them in, then sneak around the back of a pole to kill him for me Mr. Trick. Okay, I'll stop. It's got great changes of pace. Light out tempts you into playing with a bit more stealth with the way that it looks. On the container ship, maybe you play patiently and pounce when the stormy seas have rocked the boat into confusion. Though, of course, there's nothing stopping you from sprinting through these levels in the same chaotic fashion as usual, obliterating everyone in your path, and then occasionally dying to someone that you should have killed because you missed a click. This really isn't funny, I don't know why I keep doing it. Ape Out has a powerful driving theme. It starts in a laboratory, then the second disc is in a tower block, in the third there's an army, and the fourth is on a container ship. But they all have something in common. Every album starts with you... in a cage. A gorilla, a wild animal, in a box only a few feet on each side. The game never has to tell you what your goal is because it is instinctively clear. Escape. And it justifies everything else. When you let animals out of cages, they're dangerous to people who look like strangers. All the carnage, all the chaos is backed up by an unrelenting desire to... get out. You're really on the gorilla's side, an animal with so many human traits and an endangered and sympathetic species. Gorilla good, guns bad, simple and effective. And this theme builds to a perfect crescendo in the final level, which is probably my favourite finale of any game that I've played for a good few years. Ape Out is an art game, like Journey, like Eco, but coming from a totally different angle. It has a theme, it has a mood, and it uses all the attributes of a video game to make those ideas sing. Just talking about Ape Out on a mechanical level would be doing it a disservice. That isn't to say that the gameplay isn't fun, but what is so good is how everything comes together to create this over-the-top, energetic and evocative experience that lets you be dynamic, that lets you be chaotic, that lets you... 